we're on our way as per usual with all the stress and uh panic and lack of sleep i just you know i was so concentrating so much on getting this boat out of the out of the marina making sure that the boat's ready and that rob and i are ready that you know the gopro at the moment just seems to be the last thing i think of grabbing um i, sh I should make more of an effort obviously as i have a youtube channel <laughs> i'm a bit of rubbish at this however we're on our way passage plans done uh i'll recheck the weather uh I'm hoping my Iridium Go works. It wasn't working in the marina or in uh, in the square in Gibraltar, but I think it's just because it's just too much of a built-up area. So I'll try again when I'm out there. So uh, yeah, this is it. This is this is the biggest one. I say the big one. It's not the big one. The big one is the Atlantic. However, this for me is the biggest one. So I'm going to get out here, see what wind I've got. Hopefully, get some sails up and then make our way around into uh, the Orca Gauntlet. Hopefully, don't see any of those hawkers today. We are sailing. We are sailing across the ocean. Across the sea. Just turn the engine off. We're halfway across the bay. Wind's actually picking up. It's coming more on the more of the broad reach. Doing five and a half knots now. So hopefully, this will keep us plodding along most of the day out the straights so that'd be lovely we're about three hours into the passage as you can see the weather isn't the best it's a misty bit chilly i mean rob's even got his woolly hat on but we are sailing the engine's off it's not due to be with us for for too long as soon as we come out the straights kind of dissipates probably put the engine on for a few more hours just to get away from the TSS um, start on that two to five degrees course to the Canaries if I can get on that by the end of the day I'm happy and then just uh, wait for the wind I'm just slightly concerned about this, this big swell coming down on Monday I really need to get ahead of that but we'll see Tarif is behind us Uh, traffic separation scheme over to our port if you can see them in the misty distance uh, yeah just plodding along so we're crossing through I'm gonna try and show you on the uh, on my chart plotter but it's gonna flicker so at the moment here's the TSS you've got west going traffic east going traffic there's a gap there's a in the middle here you can see where i am oh so that black vessel with a yellow arrow that's me there's a gap between the tss so you can see that that vessel's back in um, and there's some coming out i'm cutting across i need to cut across so i can start getting out over the top of morocco to start heading down but it's you know we got shipping everywhere the big we'll had a couple of big ones go past me but i think i'm uh i think i'm doing all right i think i should be all right as long as this wind keeps up gets me through it i think it's going to be dark by the time we're actually out in the atlantic which is a shame because i wanted to get well out of the way of the shipping before it got dark but it is what it is we're on our way this is what i've been up against there's my little boat the little black one see all those little blue boat shaped things well they are boats believe it or not ones like this like that like this um, and I've got some more approaching who according to this are gonna be about 300 foot away from me so I need to start thinking this one there is coming towards me I need to start thinking about making a maneuver soon so so that's the bottom of the traffic separation scheme as soon as I'm in line with that, I'm kind of home dry. It's uh, 18.40, coming up to the end of the first day. We made pretty good progress, pretty much where I thought we was going to get. Um, we was getting some good speeds coming down after the uh, traffic separation scheme. There must have been a bit of an acceleration zone around Morocco, the top of Morocco. Um, engines on, as you can probably hear wind just dropped right down and swung around to our nose but it did say same for tomorrow 
So Tuesday, Wednesday is hardly any wind, a bit squirrely, and it's not till Thursday that it really sort of kicks in and can take us down south. So I'll keep the engine on for a few hours. We'll have a bit of dinner, charge the batteries, um, and then probably just do some drifting, I think, overnight. Good morning, day two on our way down to the Canaries. Uh, lovely morning. So it was, it started off cloudy coming out of the straits when it got dark and then it cleared up. Like you can see all the stars, it was lovely. And it's got a bit cloudy out in front of us again. Um, now Rob was extremely kind and let me do quite a bit of napping last night. He's very good on nights. He'd done a lot of nights when he was working before he retired and um, he said he was quite happy. So I'd do a little chart plot now and then and have a nap on the sofa. It was brilliant. Um, so he's off the bed. He's gone down. You get a few hours sleep and when he's ready, you come back up and there's no wind. Sail, main sail's up, but it's vlogging. Uh, doing, we're doing two knots. I think some of that's current. As long as we can keep course, then uh, we just sit like this for a day. I think the wind should be coming. I think there's a little spell tomorrow and then Thursday is when it comes in. So um, we look forward to that. I've managed to get the rudder onto the hydro vane. So hopefully we'll give that a go at some point when we get some wind and see if we can get that working, which will take a lot of strain off the battery with the auto helm on. Uh, I can keep you updated. Plodding along. Don't like having the engine on. Uh, I can't even update my weather file, so I don't know when the winds come in. The last update we saw yesterday was, I think Thursday, it was all filling in from halfway down up. So we need to be halfway, which is another, uh, what, 200 miles? You know, we need to be doing about five, at least five knots to get that in two days time. So today's Tuesday to get there for Thursday but I'm not going to be doing five knots. I'm not going to have the engine on for that long. So I don't know, what do I do? Keep motoring, hope the engine's okay and we don't run out of fuel or drift and just be there a little later. We'll see, swell's picking up a little bit. Not big at all, not it's still comfortable, but it's definitely coming in. So we have to keep an eye on that. When Rob does lunch, Rob does lunch. Look at that. Go and keep the skipper happy. What a feast. Dolphinos. Come to play. It's a quick one. It's a quick one. Okay. Yeah. Ourselves a little uh, stowaway. <laughs> no idea where he's come from. Oh, actually, Casablanca and Rabat's only, what did we say, 70, 80 yeah, nautical miles? Yeah, 70 nautical miles.
Ray Bird from Casablanca. Play it again, Sam. He's cool. Look at that. Look at this. Good play. I've got it, Mark. I've got it. Where's he going? <laughs> He's on my shoulder. <laughs> I turned into a pirate. Where is he? Arr! <laughs> I, I always wanted to be a pirate and now, now I am. <laughs> Come on. I don't know what's happening here. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this. Come on. Is he gone? Yeah. Oh, he's there. <laughs> oh. Right. We literally do have a stowaway right now. We're drawing near to end of day two. It's 20 past five in the evening and we've been under motor all day. So frustrating. We've got, oh, actually we've got five knots of wind now. It was, it's been about two knots of wind all day, three knots. The only thing is it's, it's right on the nose. So there's nothing we can do unless we just start tacking all the way down. It's not worth it. So yeah, unfortunately the engine's running. Um, had a shower, a cockpit shower. So in the back of the boat here, A nice little shower so uh rob averted his eyes he didn't want to see me naked and that's why i didn't film any of that because neither do you guys but it's nice you just stand here shower stood here naked there's no one around and then water just runs out the back so i feel all fresh and clean um reading a book waiting for sundown cook some dinner um uh yeah that's it just wait for the wind so the last report i had before i left the port was 3 a.m wednesday so tomorrow like early hours of the morning but i can't get my iridium go working so i've got no weather update um so that could be old it might not come at all it might come earlier it might be on time i've got no idea so right now we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants seeing what we get and just working with it uh, but i just want to switch this engine off I don't like the engine. We have got another stowaway. Don't know how long Mr. Squiddy's been on deck. He probably flew up last night. He's going to have to go back to the deep. If you watched my last episode, prepping the boat to get ready for this trip down, uh, you would have seen that I cut back the halyards. So the lines that go, that go up and down that take my mainsail I cut it back because when it goes through the roller at the top of the mast, it can chafe. Well, the last couple of days, we've not had a lot of wind, so the, the, the mainsail's just been flogging and smashing. And already, see it's burnt and chafed. See, look at that. So I'm gonna do it again. Coming to the end of day three, Wednesday, second. Um, 
very uneventful day really uh been on the engine since 10 o'clock this morning we just we've got absolutely no wind four knots um the sea states calmed down it was it was uh it was quite rolly earlier you can't you can never you can never tell on gopro anyway there was a good couple of meter swell got a nice uh on the way sunset on the way yeah just doing a bit of hand steering give the auto, auto helm a bit of a rest probably about a third of the way i was really hoping to have picked up some winds but i think if the report is as it was three days ago when we left um then we should get some wind tomorrow lunch afternoon time uh, i'll probably have to turn the engine off way before then to conserve fuel which means probably just bobbing around but uh yeah we'll see how it goes oh there's some trash in the water there Nice. I'd say an eventful day actually. I saw a whale this morning, that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. My new favourite thing squishies, sour cherry, and apple. <laughs> they are amazing. Good morning. Day four, Thursday the 3rd. Um, I've been on shift come up and watch a couple of hours ago Rob done the nights again from like 11 to 6 he's he's a good egg isn't he <laughs> a bit of a rolly night didn't sleep great he managed to do a little bit of sailing but there's no wind I've got four knots and where it's on the stern it's just swinging so he can't he literally can't do anything he just flogs the sails causes chafe so still on the motor probably got 20 hours of fuel left maybe so there's no way we'd make it in anywhere on fuel we have to sell um, wind is due to come in today I think but that that reports four days old so it might not come in Let's see we could end up drifting for a couple of days see what happens another lesson learned for me really I actually I actually said this yesterday and I don't know why I've not implemented it but um, I've been waiting for the wind to come behind we've been on a course of two to five degrees which is pretty much straight to the Canaries straight to Gran Canaria the winds also pretty much in that direction but because of our apparent apparent wind because we go in that way the winds going that way we haven't had any wind so um, I've been waiting to pole out, have the head sail one side and the main sail the other. What I thought of the, uh, yesterday, I think it was, is just to jibe my way down. So I've got the line and just, you know, get the wind sort of on one of my quarters or even, you know, sort of nearer the beam, broad reaching. And I didn't do it. But then this morning, when I woke up and it was getting light, it was that camera and it was way off in the distance. And I, I saw he had sails up. And I figured he must have been motor sailing and then it clicked. He's not, he's doing what I thought yesterday of just driving down. Now I've got both sails up, I've got eight knots of wind and I'm doing six knots, I've got a bit of current with me. So I could have been doing this all night, just jiving. I could have been doing it maybe for the last day and a half. I've wasted so much fuel, that's probably cost me hundred quid in fuel. Yeah, I'm going off course. However, I'm, I'm heading in the right direction, you know, in a couple of hours, I'll put a jibe in and start heading back west to get back on my line. And then two hours after that, back again, until such time as I've got enough wind speed behind me that I can pole out and the, the sails don't flog. Anyway, lesson learned. Every day's a school day. I'm learning all the time. You know, I'm pretty, pretty new to this and to watch and learn other people. I am so happy right now, just being back under sail, having the engine off actually moving in kind of the right direction it's, you know beautiful sun, sunrise this morning sun's out i love it this is this is this is what i bought a boat for not all this motoring around i know it's part and parcel but the engine i don't want to speak too soon touch wood the engine's been really good you know she's been motoring for hours and hours a couple of days she's been on for a couple of days not consistently we managed to switch her off now and then but 
think I may have sorted the issues. Um, a few Jubilee clips were loose on the return pipes on the diesel. Um, guy actually spotted, spotted those first, but I've just redone them again because they were still leaking. Um, never, you know, don't want to speak too soon, but fingers crossed, could be it. Uh, we've got some clouds up ahead. Could bring some wind. Um, we'll see, see what happens. It's, like I say, the wind is due, but it's due to come from the north, not down there in the south. But there we go. I'm happy. I had a play around with the hydro vane the other day. Um, didn't go too well. She wouldn't hold course, but it was very light winds. I don't think when, when it's a bit squirrely, squirrely winds, it, it doesn't do too well, I don't think, from what I can gather. However, I've got, well, <laughs> typical, as I'm doing this, the wind's dropping. But she's keeping course. So what she, do, what she do is when the wind, when the boat goes off course, the wind will push the vane, which in turn, you can see, will push her rudder. So that little rudder working independently there. And then that rudder will bring the boat around. There we go, it's doing it again because it's come off course. And when the boat comes back around to the wind, the vane will sit upright like that and then that's the boat back on course so i was looking about it, it's fluctuate i wanted about 185 ish and it's it's been going up and down to, you know sort of 190 180 so um again if the wind shifts there's not a lot you can do so you do have to keep an eye on it but i think when i do the trade wind passage the winds are consistent and not you know pretty much in the same direction and a lot of the time uh, well you know for a lot days at a time so I can imagine you don't really need to worry too much, but it's nice. I've uh, finally sort of getting the feel for it, and um, I think it's going to be it's going to be an extra crew member. That's what they say. These things are like another crew member, saving saving energy on my auto helm. So the solar is actually sun solar. It's actually putting into the batteries, which is great. Um, engines, yeah, like I said earlier, the engines played ball. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy at the moment. Being back under sail so less stressful than just having the engine running i love it um probably going to stick about half a day onto the passage if we keep having to jibe down the, the course at the moment i'm about six miles southeast of my original track but it is what it is we'll get there In slack. Stop there a minute. Stop. The first time I have pulled out in anger. Because I've got a very large Genoa, I think it's 140 cent Genoa. What I'm going to do in the future in light winds like these is um, telescope out the pole. So my pole can actually telescope out. That's what she said. And um, I can get more of the head sail out. That's also what she said, which means that we go a bit quicker. But there we go. I've set it up. The sea state is pretty good. It wasn't gnarly and rolling, but it still still made me balance a bit. But yeah, we just chug along and now we're back on course for Gran Canaria as opposed to jibing our way down the line. We'd be bang on course, two, three days, we'd be doing final corrections to, uh, to actually get in the marina or the anchorage. Coming to the end of day four, um, it's been a very productive day actually. <clears throat> so set up for goose wing as you saw properly this time you know for for, for real um, she's flying now sailing into the sunset we're just off we're on the southwest heading but close enough hydrovane the big one for me was getting this bad boy working self-steering unit um, you know tweaking around just getting used to it getting the feel for it she doesn't work so well in the light winds um, so I've noticed on a lot of sailing channels that I watch, people name their different parts, like different sails, uh, you know, the, the, the hydrovane. So I need to I need to come up with a name, or you guys need to come up with a name. Leave a comment of what I can call 
the Hydravain. Harry Hydravain, no. Harry Hydravain, no. I don't know, you guys choose. But yeah, very, very lovely day actually. So um, I've, since, since turning the engine off, um, I've, my anxiety has dropped just wondering when that engine's gonna cut. And to be fair, she has been really good. She's been plodding along quite a few hours. Don't want to know how much diesel I've used. I wish I was filling up in jib again because it's a lot cheaper. Unfortunately, I'll find out the damage when um, when we get to Grand Canaria. The winds didn't produce what they were supposed to have done today. Uh, we've had some. I mean, we're going along at like five and a half knots right now. That's perfect. That's that's plenty. As long as we can keep this up, we should be in in three days' time. Rob's gone to bed. He's uh, he's my hero because he does the nights. He lets me go to bed about 11 and I get up at 6, so uh, yeah, he's, he's brilliant. We've had dinner, washed up, so now I'm just going to sit and keep an eye on the hydrovane. So you might have seen a few episodes ago, I got a solar bag, it's what we used to use in Kosovo. So you just fill it with water, it's got a black side, you leave it in the sun and it heats it up so you can have a warm shower. We've not had the engine on for a couple of days now, which is fantastic, so there's going to be no hot water. So I'm going to use my cockpit shower head to fill this bag, throw it up on the deck and let nature heat our water for us and then have a nice warm shower later. It's a bit too chilly in the shade of the cockpit here for a shower. So I've set it up, up there in the sun. So I'm gonna sit on the deck and have me a shower up there. We're still a couple of hundred miles away from Gran Canaria, but I was just sort of uh, scanning the horizons, keeping a weathered eye out and I noticed um, the Gibraltar courtesy flag is still up. Now, I don't know, and neither does Rob, if you have to keep flying the courtesy flag of the, of the place that you've left until you get to the new place and then, you know, so that people can see where you've been, or if you should change the courtesy flag straight away to the next destination. So if any of you know the answer to that, please leave a comment below so I will know for the future. However, while I remember, I've got the Canaries flag, so I'll take the Gibraltar one down. Like I say, we've still got two days, but my memory is atrocious and I'll forget. So while it's in my head, I'm gonna do it now. Another courtesy flag change. Good morning. Welcome to day six at sea, Saturday the 5th. Sun's coming up. Um, you can hear the engines on. The reason for this is I had to turn up wind to shake out the two reefs in the main sail. So I explained by reefing a sail, you make it smaller. It's good practice to do it at night in case, you know, especially in, in the Atlantic, you get squalls, big winds. And if you're overpowered, you, it just leads to all sorts of drama. So before, you, before it gets dark, you just reef all your sails down. And we were plodding along quite nicely. Uh, four knots um, during the night. Um, at that rate, we would have been into Gran Canaria uh, six o'clock in the morning tomorrow, which isn't ideal because it's still dark until now, and it is just coming up to eight o'clock. So I've taken the reefs out, full main again. It means we are going to go quicker, but it's easier to slow down than it is to speed up if you haven't got any wind. So I'm gonna to use today to get as far as I can, and then if need be, um, we just reef again this evening and uh, just take it real slow overnight until it gets sun sunrise and then we get into Gran Canaria. It'll either be an anchor or hopefully I can get straight onto the fuel pontoon because I've done a lot of fuel. Um, and then if we can get, we've got not much chance of getting into a marina because the ARC, the Atlantic Rally of Cruisers, all going across the Atlantic and the Caribbean on the 20th. So they'll all be taking up all the slots, greedy buggers. 
Um, however, we're just plodding along. Um, I'll give it an hour, go make a coffee, a bit of breakfast. Uh, the engine's still on, but it's in neutral ticking over, charging the batteries. Another mistake is um, I didn't clean the solar panels before I left. I did about four days before we left, but there's a bit of dust on there and even a layer of dust can really affect your generating capacity. So I need to make a tool where I can stand on deck and reach up to clean across the top, across the top of the solar panel. Um, I've just seen land. Land ho! That's Lanzarote. Pardon my French. There's a couple of little islands. I don't know if you could see. Just off in the distance there. You might not be able to see. So there's a couple of small islands just north of Lanzarote. We're only 50 miles from Lanzarote, so that's going to be them two. Let me show you on the chart plot. If I zoom out. There. Those islands, let me get you. These islands there. And if I zoom out more. Sorry, that's the smaller of the islands. And then if I zoom out more, that's Lanzarote. First sight of land in... Uh, Five whole days. When do we leave? Monday. Six days. All on Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, five days. We're nearly there. Happy days. We are on the final stretch in, if I can show you. The boat. The marina. I have waited seven days to be able to fit both on the screen, zoomed in. Progress, 32 miles to run and the wind is actually being good for a change to the point where we're on pretty much a dead down run downwind run i pulled out but the, as you can see the head cell doesn't quite like it i probably need to change the angle but we're on the move towards our destination we should be in the anchorage by dinner time uh, if the wind does drop i'm not bothered about motoring for the last four hours to be honest but as it stands we're going five and a half knots under sail so happy happy days Six days, five hours, and we are here in the anchorage. It looks super, super busy. We we'll try and snurgle in somewhere. Um, looks like I've got a rib coming up to me. It might be telling me that I need to go in and book in or something. I don't know. Uh, I'll anchor up and speak in a bit. This is a tight anchorage. Wish me luck. We are in. Six days, six hours from Gibraltar 
to Gran Canaria. It's one busy anchorage. Managed to slot on in. And I don't know why my boat is the only one spinning the wrong direction. She's just settling. I've just done a really good anchor check. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm in good. I'm in good, but I'm going to stay around for a little bit just to make sure. And then pump up the dinghy, go ashore and find somewhere that sells red wine on a Sunday evening. I'm so happy. Hell of an achievement. It's over 700 miles done. Right. I'm going to leave this episode here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Join me next time where I explore a bit of the island. I have a very special visitor. If you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. It doesn't cost you anything and it supports the channel. Thank you very much.